is Jalen Rose. I'm David Jacoby. We no, are no. Jalen and Jacoby. Jalen, what is it that we get a people? Do. Do. They won. The NBA regular season is officially over, and there is way too much for us to discuss. But we're going to try to get to all the major things that we learned from this regular season and yesterday. And in particular, one thing that was decided is the Brooklyn Nets are going to be the number seven seed in the Eastern Conference, meaning they will host a playing game versus the Cavs. And they're lurking and looming as a threat to the top players and teams in the Eastern Conference. Brooklyn! So! I'm so very happy this time of year, Jacoby. It's just a celebration of the regular season. And, and, And the Brooklyn Nets, imagine James Harden was on this team. They did a blockbuster deal that added Andre Drummond. They added Seth Curry. They hope to get Ben Simmons. But they still have Kevin Durant, who averaged 30 this year. Still was terrific. Kyrie Irving, just a dazzling scorer. Like, just to watch his loud buckets on a nightly basis are incredible. And now they have a chance to secure the seven if they win against the Cavs. Mm -hmm. Or if they lose, they're the AFC, which means... They got to beat the winner of 9-10 to be the AFC. Right. Either way. Either way, once they get in, they got to play against... A really tough opponent. Yep. At the one spot or the two spot. Yep. Now, if you're them, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the Celtics and Robert Williams' injury. But for the Nets to recover and make the playoffs and have a chance for the seventh seed after having prolonged losing streaks. 11 game losing streak this season, dog. Prolonged. 11 game losing streak. Losing I don't think the streak. Pistons did that. Correct. Correct. The that. That's why I like to acknowledge the journey as the regular season ends because sometimes people forget the ebbs and flows that teams have had to go through to reinvent themselves to get to this point. It's going to be great to watch them in the and playoffs. Cleveland has had a great start of the season. They've had some injuries. You know, things happened. They lost Allen. They lost Mobley. Mm-hmm. But I don't expect them to beat the Nets. But you talked about Robert Williams. If the Nets win at home in the 7-8 game, they'll be facing the Boston Celtics. You talked about Robert Williams, but also looming is Ben Simmons. I assume we would never see Ben Simmons in a Nets uniform this entire season. However, there are now reports that he could be back for the first round of the playoffs. We're not you know, doctors. We're not chiropractors. But what do you think about these reports? I think it's a long shot. Mm-hmm. And... I'm going to stick to my my conviction here by acknowledging that he hasn't played since last June. Okay. And he's on a new team. He has a legitimate back injury that he's taking shot. He's taking a shot into that epidural back. like my Correct. wife that, giving birth. That, that, <laughs> that, 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 that's a real thing. And so for me to now see that player who had some so, some psychological challenges that he talked about in Philadelphia. He already is a, a player that struggles to attempt shots outside of the paint as well as to shoot free throws to now thrust him into a playoff situation. I, I think that's asking a lot. I would love to see him play. I hope to see him play. It's best for the game if he plays. But if I'm a betting person, man, that, that that's a tough uphill Klein for me to put my chips in the middle of the this roadmap. If the Nets beat the Cavs, which I expect they will in Barclays, that means they'll be the seven seed, which means they'll be facing off against the two seed. And the two seed got interesting yesterday. Every team played yesterday, and the Bucks, all they had to do was win. All they had to do was win against the Cavs to be the two seed, but they didn't really play. They didn't play to win. So they kind of gave the Celtics the two seed. The Celtics beat the Grizzlies. So now the Celtics are in the two seed. You mentioned time. Lord may or may not be back during this series. They hope to get him back. But they've still got Tatum and Brown. And Tatum and Brown showed out against the Grizz. And let's talk about the journey of the Boston Celtics season where Marcus Smart talked to them about sharing the ball more. Mm -hmm. And he, as their best passer, actually took initiative defensively And it proved his three-point shooting to where now all of a sudden he's a defensive player of the year candidate. You are you old enough to remember when people said that you should break up Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown? Yeah. Okay, that was 
happening this season. How about when Emei Doka first got the job and people wondered if he was in over his head and Brad Stevens was moving up to the front uh, front office and Al Horford's played quality minutes for their team. And so for the Boston Celtics to be the best defensive team in the league basically since the 1st of January, to them have the number two seat is truly phenomenal in the Eastern Conference. I want to make sure I give them a lot of props for reinventing themselves defensively as a unit, as a starting unit, um, making a couple of trades to try to make moves. Like I really appreciate what they did this year. And when we start talking about coaches of the year, I know Ime Adoka is not going to win it because Monty Williams and so many uh, Jenkins. Taylor yeah. Jenkins is there and, and Spoles there. But, man, he definitely deserves consideration. He's done a heck of a job with this team. I was a little curious about the Bucks not trying to get the two seed, but they're very comfortable with their matchup in the first round. But one team in the East that we don't discuss that much because they're almost too good, like the Suns in the West, the Miami Heat. We don't talk about them that much because we're always talking the about two through four. On. Two through four. Guess what? They didn't win yesterday. But something really interesting happened for the Heat yesterday. I like to go deep in the box score. And late night, like on uh, Christmas Eve, when everybody was asleep throughout the house, there was a couple of 40 pieces happening throughout the league. I saw my namesake, Jalen Green, even put one up. He's been balling late in the year. But Victor Oladipo for the Miami Heat scored over 40. For the first 40 points for the first time in years. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that's a big news for a team that has Eric Spolstra now developing another asset. Yep, they just found on the couch cushions. They just found on the couch cushions a 40-point scorer. Now all of a sudden the Miami Heat, the number one seed, looks stronger and look deeper. And you're right about the Bucks. Their championship tenacity and, and, and always statistics paid off for them. Because they get to play the Bulls, mm -hmm. a team that's limping into the postseason. So I really like what ended up happening in the East. I felt like each team at the top got properly rewarded. One of the teams at the top that we'll discuss briefly will be the 76ers. They will play the Toronto Raptors in the first round. One thing that's interesting about the 76ers team, Joel Embiid, first center to win the scoring title since Shaquille O'Neal. Shout out to Joel Embiid. Like... He put on a show this year, and like the, the way he punished the Indiana Pacers like late in the year, like in particular, like how Domini was reminded me of the people that he's being compared to. Guys like Moses Malone, who led the league in scoring and mm. won MVP, and Shaquille O'Neal, who won MVP and led the league in scoring. And I, I appreciated watching the growth in his game of not being a volume three-point shooter, but an effective three-point shooter, but still dominating and getting to the free throw line. But unlike the first three teams that I mentioned in the East, things didn't fall their way. No. At all. And let me tell you why. Number one, the Raptors already give them problems. Mm -hmm. Let me remind all of you casuals. I know, I, I know, I know. Joel Embiid may win MVP, and I might even vote for him. I still haven't voted yet. And James Harden has had his moments. But let me mm. take y'all deeper in the box score for a second. Thibault's not going to be able to play in Canada. He's unvaccinated. They've already struggled against the Raptors. Whether Kawhi was on the team or not, shot to Fred Van Vliet. Shot to P. Skills, Siakam, who's been balling. Scotty Barnes, Rookie of the Year candidate. Like, they're legit. And they're a bad matchup for Philly. Especially without Thibel. They might be in trouble. Jalen, I wasn't just watching basketball yesterday. Something really bad happened. It is time no. for Negative Jacoby to join the show.